Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and we are on the surface of the moon uh, on a brand new construction here. Now you can see the hammer, the duct tape, the oxyacetylene torches, and attached to it is a rather large construction here, a tower with platforms and, well, solar panels and all these other things you find on bases. What could this possibly be, I hear you ask? Well, it is a work in progress of a mod which implements one of the most requested features so far. So, uh, yeah, we're just going to get this started, P fold out those solar panels there. That uh, big hexagonal object is an ore smelter. At the end, we have an auger, which is a, essentially a drill, which will drill in and supposedly provide us uh, ore, which we can smelt into metal. And then that metal we can uh, build into spaceships. So it basically is like Keith in on steroids where you can actually build spacecraft on whatever moon you choose to deploy your uh, deploy this base on. I've obviously just stick this on the moon using a we're well, using cheats basically. it's a, <laughs> it, it's a kind of unwieldy, although it does fold up. Uh, interestingly enough, it says it folds up to avoid the launch tower, so I suspect that this has been worked on for some time, because there hasn't been a launch tower in the game for quite a while, I think. Anyway, um, yeah, so we smell ore in there. Uh, for some reason, the auger isn't perfectly working. There is also dynamite, which is included with this pack, but uh, we don't need that here. We're, we've got it... By default, it runs in infinite mode, which means you can pretty much not worry about actually deploying, uh, collecting minerals. I mean, it's still very much in testing. It's a very early version, and it uses the Keythane DLL, but it's hacked in its own way, so it's not compatible. You can't have both at the same time, which is kind of a problem, because ultimately you're going to need to mine not just the ore, but the fuel and the monopropellant and everything else so you can make your spacecraft fly. So anyway, yeah, click on this, select load, and click load and bang, I now have my two-stage lander sitting pretty on top of this, um, on top of the, the landing pad, the launch pad. It comes already crewed, you don't need to ship up crew at this time. I'm presuming at some point that will get updated and modified. So yeah, this is really nice if you want to practice landing on the moon. You just deploy your spacecraft there and, uh, well, practice landing. Uh, of course, you know, we've done that a million times, so you don't need to watch this at regular speed. Uh, you, it only lets you load vehicles that are in your space plane, or not your space, in your vehicle assembly building. There is a fold-up runway, but it still, it doesn't take anything from the space plane hangar. It's only from the vehicle assembly building. Of course, you can copy the things over, and I'm presuming that that will get updated and improved, as I said, very early. Uh, <laughs> Very early work. So yeah, let's bring up the Kerbal X. Now, if you remember, Kerbal X is a design to get into orbit and almost decent way to the moon, actually. Now, of course, starting on the moon, this thing gets into orbit without even using all of its external boosters. There we go. Look at that. Taking this up at full speed here. Actually, um, it's kind of hard to get this thing to maneuver quickly enough. Um... Oh yes, make sure I ditch those tanks. Look at that, I ditched two of the tanks and I'm already in orbit, right? It does not require a great deal of work, uh, a great deal of fuel to get into moon or orbit. So of course, you know, this is uh, a concept. This is a very major, you know, recognized concept that if you can build stuff in space or on the moon even, in the real moon, right, then you can save a lot in terms of launch mass, right? Now, in the 80s, I remember reading about the idea of having giant solar panels in orbit around the Earth to provide power. And there was an analysis that basically pointed out that if you built a moon base and then mined the aluminium and all the structural materials there, and then shipped it up using a mass driver, then you would end up cost the whole thing would end up costing one. Well, it's something like 3%, right? Was 3% was a figure I heard. And that's including the cost of setting up the moon base. This was essentially to build a network of super-sized solar panel satellites in geostationary orbit that would beam the power down via microwaves. And you know, instead of worrying about you know developing fusion power, which is always going to be 50 years off, no, you just go straight to solar power and beam that energy down via the magic that is microwaves. And of course... 
bonus to governments that do this is you have giant microwave death rays to shoot people with. Oh, just kidding. I mean, you know, obviously not creating a super weapon is a major uh, barrier or a major you know, consideration when you're designing a beamed energy system. And uh, there's a di different ways to get around this. One is to use infrared lasers to shoot down to uh, high altitude airships, essentially, that would collect the energy using uh, another version of, of energy collectors. And then they would be tethered by cables that would relay the power to the surface. Well, speaking of the surface, I'm just trying to get this little rover onto the surface. Uh, the sky crane thing works really well when you're, you know, on Duna, but here it, almost any thrust is enough to counteract gravity. Oh, except in this case. Oh, nice, it's just kind of flipping around. Oh, yeah, um, I probably still have cheat modes enabled here because I had to get it onto the surface of the moon and I didn't want it to spontaneously explode. Um, there we go, unbreakable joints and no crash damage. Let's get rid of those and watch the results. Oh yes, some nice explosions. That is nice to have. <laughs> yes. Ah, uh, yes, look at this thing. Oh yeah, let's ram the rover into the, the other spaceship. After all, you know, if we uh, lose our spacecraft on the moon, we don't have to worry about them. We just uh, recreate another, right? That's half the fun. As long as we don't destroy our landing, our, our base, we should be okay. Okay, rover ramming speed. Full speed ahead. I don't think this is going to do very much to these things. What do you think? Anyone place bets? Place your bets. What's going to break? And nothing. Yeah, well, that was rather anticlimactic, wasn't it? But uh, you can perform these experiments now, can't you? Ah, there's the thing. And there's our... Um, yeah, there's our Kerbal. Uh, also interesting to note is that the um, the launch clamps do not go away because, well, they they don't go away. So you're going to have to get rid of those manually. Uh, it doesn't clear anything off when you create a new object on the pad, which leads me to this little experiment where I decide to try and stick a Kerbal in the middle of, of something that I'm about to spawn. I'm not quite sure where, but that seems like a good place to start. going to spawn the four... The, the two-stage lander. Two-stage lander, of course, has... Um, it has four rockets on it, so if he stands at the corner, he should get hit by one. There we go. Two-stage lander. Spawn. Load. Boom. Oh, well, that was rather anticlimactic. Mm, well, I'm sure there's a way you can do this. I'm sure you can exploit this to create, like, a mass driver and send... Oh, yeah. Let's just ditch that thing. Uh, no explosions. Oh, that, that's rather disappointing. Oh, there's an explosion, which was obscured by the nav ball. <laughs> Typical. Ah, uh, well, I guess I'd better put this thing into orbit as well, right? Spinny, spinny, spinny. Orbit, orbit, orbit. Um, yeah, if I was to build this, I wouldn't include the Sepatrons, to be honest. Yeah, there we go. We're practically in orbit. We just need to adjust our periaps by thrusting towards the... the thrusting towards the surface because we're going up right if we thrust downwards it actually will lower our apoaps and drop or, or raise our periaps right okay so what else can we do well we have to get rid of these things and unfortunately the only way to do it is the old right click end flight go back to the space center you know do it again so things with launch clamps not the hottest um not the best thing. And also there's weird sounds that happen whenever we come in here. I'm not sure what's going on there. Okay. Oh, wait, we, we've lost uh we've lost another solar panel. Ah, crikey. Yeah, these things are extraordinarily fragile and solar panels randomly fall off. Oh look, we actually made some ore, some metal from some ore here. There's like these things up here that aren't modeled are apparently ore bins and metal bins. Uh the auger still isn't working either. Yeah, development software, but who cares? You know, just deploy the, the construction node, which is a command module, and the base, and you'll be fine for now. Of course, because you're building things in the moon, it means you can put things on the moon that would normally never get there. For example, this uh, K-17 bomber, which will uh, not be able to go anywhere because it requires atmosphere for its propellers to work. Well, so much for that as a great idea. Yeah, there they go, the engines not working at all. 
yeah, that worked really well. Throttle up, they made the sound and then they just died instantly. <laughs> and I can't wobble it off of here or anything. So it's more or less going to be stuck. Unless there is one other thing you can do. You can, of course, spawn another object inside of it. And watch the explosion that happens. Are we ready? Uh, let's do the... Let's do this one. Super Heavy Lander. Oh, yes! <laughs> nice. Bomber flying in every direction. Wow, look at that thing. Nice. Yeah, we really need to get Danny in here so he can exploit this newfound power for his mass driver network. Look at this guy. He's just skimming across the surface like a very skimmy thing. Yes. Okay, so uh, let's... Do that again, because that was pretty cool, huh? Let's try and find it. There we go. Load ship. What should we do at this time? Um, come on, the Philadelphia experiment. Ready? The space station core. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Okay, you know, at some point this is not going to work, right? At some point we're going to lose... <laughs> oh, sometimes simple pleasures are the best, right? Oh, still things exploding. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Come on, where's the, where's the, where's the pad? I'm just switching through. Is that it? Nope, that's not it. Nope, nope. Come on, give me my thing. Oh, still more things exploding. I like explosions, they're kind of funny. Uh, unless, of course, they're ruining my mission. Is that it? Nope, nope. Come on, we want to do it one more time. Um, nope, nope. Yes! Yes, okay, what should we spawn? Let us spawn the space probe, the space probe, the mapper satellite. There we go, Z map. Oh, oh wow, we completely obliterated everything this time. Oh well. Well, so much for that, I'm going to have to cheat it back onto the surface, which is actually really easy, right? If you go into your file after creating this, into your save file, just set the reference body to 2 and change your altitude to, like, 2300 meters I think our height or whatever that should work basically oh yeah and uh, set your orbit to like 150 whatever seriously it's really easy to do and anyway, we this thing should have more than enough Delta V not only to escape the moon but to escape the Kerbal or uh, Kerbin system and to in fact escape the Sun Kerbal and head off into interstellar space but uh, I'm not going to follow it all the way there. I'll see you around in another video. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.